everybody out. Let's go. There you go. Still a little cluster of them down here. Come on, guys. Everybody out. Out you go. Come on. Let's go. Go ahead. There you go. Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you how back on October 4th of 2024, we were called out to a rural property in upstate Indiana that had a huge number of paper wasp nests all over the property. There was barns and outbuildings in the home itself. All of them were covered in these nests. As you see here, a skylight as well was just filled with these paper wasps. So we had to go ahead and remove them all and relocate them off site miles away and then release them because it was mating season when we collected them. October is in the fall toward the end of their season. So we wanted to make sure to get all of these back out into the ecosystem where they could mate and carry on their genetic line for the next season. So we just set them up in a very temporary habitat just long enough to give them some food uh, for energy because at this time of year the dearth is happening so there's a lot less nectar and a lot less food out there for all these wasps so we gave them a little treat of honey and once they had time to fuel up a little bit we went ahead and set them free and with this sort of collection we had them all collected into these same basic devices all mixed together because there was just so many nests on this property that we didn't have time to separate each individual nest and so we just went ahead and released all of them in mass and the nests were all hatched out for this season. There was no eggs, no larvae left. So the primary focus of this release was just to make sure that the males and females collected in this grouping of wasps were allowed to go out and mate. Paper wasps are so laid back that some of them didn't even feel like going, so we had to kind of help them out and encourage them to leave. Paper wasps are great pollinators and great for biological control in our local ecosystems, which means they feed their larvae with pest insects that they collect all over the ecosystem. So they're very important for that purpose. So we wanted to make sure that when mating season happens, they go out, they mate, and the impregnated queens will then hibernate over winter and they'll come and make nests again in the following spring. And that's why this was an important relocation, even though we don't collect any of these wasps or this species for venom immunotherapy, it's still important that these wasps are out there. So let's take you back to October 4th, 2024, and we'll show you the entire process of collection and release. As always, we appreciate you riding along with us. If you enjoy the content on our channel, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. Enjoy the show. So we're out at a residential property in the countryside, and they had a ton of paper wasps they need to be relocated. All of these are beneficial native Polistes wasps. That's a paper wasp. And some are males, but most are females. So we're just gonna send these to a different location. Here's a skylight. Pretty much filled with Polistes wasps. So we've got some nests up there that are visible. And mostly just wasps that are trapped in the skylight. So we're gonna vacuum them out and relocate them. So this client was located out in the countryside and they had a lot of barns on their property. And we pulled a lot of the Polistes wasps off of the barn eaves and the various outbuildings on that property. And also all around their house. They had nests pretty much everywhere. And this skylight was part of a porch structure off the side of the house. And there were children's swings attached to the ceiling of this porch and they were often in there playing. So it was important to remove these wasps. They were simply a danger to the children and frankly to anybody at that property who might use the porch. So these wasps had to go. Despite being very beneficial, there was just so many of them all over the property that they did pose a sting risk and they needed to be relocated. So what we're doing here is vacuuming them up very gently, trying to make sure that we don't injure them. And it was a bit of a challenge to get a couple of them, but most of them were pretty easy to vacuum up. There were so many of them and there were so many different nests involved that it was easier for us just to collect them all into one container rather than trying to do individual nests and individual wasps that matched up with those nests. It just was not possible to do that in this environment. 
So the plan here was to remove all the nests, all the wasps, contain them all together, and then take them off site miles away to another property and release all of them into the wild at that point. With these wasps in particular, they're native and they're beneficial. So it's important not to kill this type of wasp. If you see Polistes wasps in your area and they're dark colored, brown or maroon or red, these are native wasps. You wanna make sure you do not hurt these wasps if you can possibly help it. If you need to remove them, just knock their nest down. They will ultimately go away on their own. Um, you don't need to spray them with poison. If you're afraid to approach them or what have you, if you absolutely have to spray them and kill them, just use organic soap mixed with water. Put it into a spray bottle. You can spray them with that. That will suffocate the wasps naturally. It doesn't require any poison or any toxin at all. And just be aware, for the most part, Polistes wasps, also called paper wasps, are super docile. They are the least aggressive species, so try to leave them where they are when you can. So as you can see here, we've got a few dozen Polistes wasps, sort of a mix between Metricus and Fuscatus, northern paper wasp, metric paper wasp. And what we're gonna do now is just release them into the wild. But first, we'll give them a little honey to eat. One note on voiceover here is we only had footage of the skylight collection. It was such a big job with so many structures, we just didn't have time to film most of it. So that's why you only saw the skylight part of that collection on that particular property. But we had pulled multiple nests off the barns, the shed, the house. They've been pretty hungry because this time of year, a lot of the nectar has stopped flowing out in the environment. And there's a lot fewer pest insects to hunt and most of their larvas hatched out for the year, so they're not hunting much anyway, as far as protein goes. They're mostly interested in what they can eat, which is the adult wasps eat sugars, sweet carbohydrates, fluids typically. So we give them a little honey to work with here. One note on voiceover here is that one of the main reasons we did this relocation at this time was that it's mating season here for these wasps. Late summer into autumn, these are the months when these wasps need to go out and mate, so it was important to let them go free so that they could do that. Once they're mated, the females will hibernate for the winter and start their own nests in the spring. Honey's mean, starting to thicken up, but this will be plenty for all of them to eat for a while. Because we're going to put this in here. Once they all climb out, we'll put the honey in. This time of year, the dearth is starting to happen, which means the nectar flow, the natural nectar flow on plants and flowers and whatever is starting to go away. And so there's less and less food for all of these wasps to eat. So we give them a little bit of extra food. Usually you're gonna use sugar water, but we didn't have any prepared on this day, so we just grabbed some honey. Honey's not ideal, because it can transfer honeybee pathogens to wasps. Not all honey is contaminated with these diseases, but use sugar water when you can, one to one mix. See how they're all clustering up around the corners? Very much social insects. This will allow the males to congregate with the females. Maybe they can mate before the end of the season here. And we'll give them enough honey to last so that they can all get something to eat.
These guys don't quite want to come out yet. So we'll just leave them here because they don't quite want to come out of there. So we'll let them just crawl out on their own and take off because they're all going to get released anyway. Here's one of the males. slowly starting to get that they're free. Let's go. Why you guys take off? Come on. Alright, everybody out. Let's go. There you go. Let's do a little cluster of them down here. Come on, guys. Everybody out. Out you go. Come on. Let's go. These little males are so mellow. All right, everybody go. Come on. Go ahead. So we've got a couple here that are still hanging on to their nest. They don't quite want to leave yet. Come on, guys. stay with their nest but there's nothing left in the nest it's all hatched out so they're just kind of hanging out <laughs> 